Okay, so here's the thing. I'm, I don't really like talking on, on camera. I don't really enjoy doing these streams, but somebody asked me to kind of go through this, um, how I did it, the process and everything. So I'm going to do that. First things first, you have to set up a palette, uh, or sorry, uh, the canvas, right? Um, so if you were to go to new, um, I'm just going to save this one real quick. So let's save it. So the first time you open up Krita, uh, you're going to be greeted with this, right? Um, except you're not going to have anything in here. Um, over here you have your, your new file, open file. Uh, you can actually drag files over to the spot and it will open up immediately. Um, if you go through the process of actually setting this up, so you have your new file. Um, in this case, you want it to be one of these designated widths and heights. Um, I do a higher resolution. You can do a lower resolution. You don't have to do it so high. I have found that a higher resolution does allow more detail to go in to the picture in the end. Um, because the lower resolution is going to limit you to the amount of pixels per inch that you're actually using to begin with. So um, it's it's going to get, uh, you're going to lose quality regardless. It's just going to happen. But the higher resolution that you start with, uh, the PPI, that's going to allow you to put more detail in and it's going to um, going to allow more detail to come out at the end. Um, and I have tested it both ways, so there you go. Anyway, so you want pixels by pixels. Um, for this one, I'm doing 4096 by 4096. Um, you can make it a smaller size, but keep in mind that's going to be less detail that goes in. Uh, you want it to be RGB. 16-bit. Uh, I haven't really tested this uh, as far as float versus integer, but I have been using integer and the default profile. Uh, default profile, now I have had some issues with some of the colors, uh, especially with uh, better continents. Um, it's a good mod. Uh, the, the guy that made it's pretty cool, um, but I have had issues where the color profile, either my settings or theirs, I don't know, but some colors come out wrong when you import the picture. Um, so changing the color profile, uh, because the colors, the, the hex are in 8-bit, it's not 16-bit. So changing the color profile over um, and then trying to change that uh, those colors over some colors don't actually come through correctly and I'll I'll show you what I mean later um, so anyway uh, then you hit create and create a canvas so the first thing you see are the layers right over here to the right you see a black canvas it's automatically gonna set it up for a black background if it doesn't just come down here to the plus Hit plus, create a new canvas, uh, create a new, yeah, new canvas, and you can paint it with black if you want. Um, otherwise, you're you're going to be greeted with at least one layer here. Um, if you want to delete something, you can select it, hit remove, come down here, remove layer. Uh, you can also duplicate a layer or mask. Uh, if you duplicate a mask that is nested, it will duplicate. Uh, everything that's nested under it. So say if this was a convert it to a uh, transparency mask, right? So it automatically nested it to the one above it. It doesn't always do that. Sometimes it'll just be, you know, hanging out. Um, in that case, what you do is you pick it up, drag it, uh, you know, sh uh, basically selecting it with your key press and dragging it over to where it's supposed to be. And you see where it turns blue, drop it. 
and it attaches it to that layer. Okay. So cool thing about this is that you see how the paint layer one is empty, right? So if I was to paint in here, black is negative, white is positive. Um, so it's going to actually uh, create that filter there. Um, now this would actually work if there was something in here. So say, say we had, um, we're going to paint in there, right? So it'll take a moment. Okay, so what I did was I actually dropped a, a straight color, uh, white, in there, um, and it could be it could be black also, um, or any color in between. But since it's a height map, this is actually um, going to be black and white. Now you see that when this is painted, when it's black, it actually takes away from the negative space. When it's white it adds to the negative space, but it only adds what that transparency mask is. So that transparency mask defines what's actually on or showing uh, in the paint layer. So again, um, white is actually going to bring it out more. So uh, you can see where these black marks from the paint layer, okay, um, if I paint white over it, it's actually going to make it white because that's the transparency layer, right? It's, it's negative and positive. So um, that's the basics of that. Um, if you were to take this layer, so all three of these layers, right? They are individual. Well, these two are individual layers. So layer one, layer two. Um, and you select them, right click them, go down to group, okay? And you can actually just do control G or you can select it from the bottom there, right here. Uh, what that's going to do is actually create a new group. So, uh, of course it didn't work, so um, let's go to a group and I hate this. My resolution is all screwy right now, so. Anyway, it groups it. So the cool thing about this is that if you if you need to resize something, um, and this doesn't really work so well for the transparency layers I found, but if you need to resize something, you go over here and you select the selection tool, and holding Shift you can actually keep the aspect correct. So if you need to resize something, say you have like a a continent, right? and it's too big, so you want to make it smaller. Uh, you can resize it. You can also rotate it. Um, you can get the, uh, where it turns into these, I can't really see it there, but you kind of see it where it's like two arrows that are opposing each other. That'll actually distort it, um, which is really cool, especially if you get it to the other direction. Um, and you can, basically force perspective on this. Um, so, mind you, I've only been using this tool for maybe three months, and there are much, much better videos on how to use this, but specifically just for doing height maps. That's, that's really what I'm after. If you want to know how to use Krita itself or the tools or anything like that, just Google. You know, just look up at YouTube. There's plenty of really great videos. So anyway, um, so that's that. Obviously, you want to save it at the end. I'm not going to save this because it's trash. So opening files. Um, I'm going to go into the one that I'm working on right now, right? Um, and this is this one right here. So it's a .kra uh, KRA file. Uh, it's a Crito file. Specifically, um, if you want to save each individual layer, you need to save it as a .kra file, which is default. Now, if you want to save uh, layers as the RGB, uh, you want to save it as the PNG file. Um, and you can actually do that by just going up here. And that's what I normally do. I save a backup of the main file and a backup of the other files. 
So you just do save as. Uh, come up here, and since this is this file right here, I um, actually pull files from a um, folder that's easier to understand as far as the the folder um, layout. So this one I'm just going to name the uh, PVE uh, shield map because this is actually based on a, a Nordic shield. Um, uh, historically accurate Nordic shield. Anyway, um, so I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to save it. So I'm going to have four files in here. Um, I don't, you don't need all those files granted, but I'm going to end up having four files in here. Um, and they are going to be uh, .png files. So um, I'm just going to save this as height map. Uh, actually lowercase because I don't know if it's necessary. Uh, if you do .png, if you're already saving it as, so there's two different ways of saving it, um, but if I save it like that, it's going to uh, come over here and save it. Uh, now I've been doing embed sRGB profile, um, and you can see right there what it does. It's actually more for uh, the uh, website. Uh, so and you can read read through these options and if you want to get the options up just highlight where the box is and it'll pop up so anyway um, really all you really need is the force convert to sRGB uh, so I'm going to do that it's going to save it and granted some of this information is not accurate I get that um, like I said, I've only been using this tool for three months. Feel free to correct me. I don't really care. So anyway, uh, this tool right here, top, right in the middle, uh, it'll actually turn on the, and this is how I did this map. Um, it'll create a mirrored uh, horizontal and vertical mirror. Um, if you want to move it around, you unlock it, and this little arrow right here will actually lock it. Moved across center canvas, uh, we'll put it back at center canvas, which is extremely useful if you move it ever. Um, and there you go, it's at the center. So here's the thing with these, um, you have this gray scale. Um, Black is, think of it as the lowest point, um, and white, pure white, is going to be the highest point. Now the map is going to try to figure out in between those two points. So it's going to average. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. You can try to mess around with it and you know, go into the settings of better continents and, and force it to uh, uh, go higher and whatnot uh, with, with one of the settings that are in there. But from my experience, it, it just screws things up. So, um, you know, just think of, you know, your highest point is going to be the whitest point and your lowest point is going to be the darkest point, right? So anyway, this is the, the center. Um, this is kind of what I'm working on right now. Um, this is basically going to have all these Nordic runes around the outside. And I'm working on cleaning it up because the back and forth between uh, saving it and you know changing the file type and all this other stuff, uh, converting it, you lose data every time you do that. And that is, you know, this is the data. So the black and the white um, and the ones and zeros, you end up losing some of that data. It tends to, you know, blend things together. So I'm blur things up. So I'm just going to clean it up just because um, I'd really like it to be the the most um, detailed when I put it in because that's going to, you know, because you don't want any sharp edges, right? You want everything to blend. So you want your grays to blend into white and your grays to blend into black. Um, because that's going to give it a little bit more smoother transition. 
And there is a really cool uh, tool that I ended up using. Um, and that was uh, this right here. You go into the paint bucket uh, and say you want to texture just a layer. So say I wanted to texture this layer right here. Um, and what I did was I found the pattern. You know, you can play around with this, the radius, the... Uh, um, and everything else um, and just choose what what your sample is but if you go into opacity you can change that around uh, but it's this one right here so the second one is the fill pattern um, you choose which one you actually want it to be and this will give you ridges because the black is going to be lower spots the whites going to be higher spots and it's just going to give you that added depth to something that doesn't really translate terribly well into the engine. Um, so it chooses this entire uh, space here. Um, now I'm unclear if it's just what you select or because it doesn't actually move up here as far as I can tell. Um, it is pretty much uh, what you save. So. Um, And you can actually go in here and do like custom patterns and stuff like that, but it's neither here nor there for that. So anyway, um, and you just drop the paint bucket. It's going to flood the, it's going to flood this layer. Um, and if you had a, a filter underneath it, um, it would actually, uh, you'd be able to use the filter to do that. So. Um, Oh, and, and the reason why that didn't show up is because I don't have a filter, so and I was on the wrong layer. So if I was to do this, right, now this is going to flood the entire image. It's going to keep the whites white, and, <laughs> you know, it's, so if you want to actually do something with that, um, what you do, so you create a copy of this, um, so just duplicate the layer since there's nothing underneath it, uh, you're going to go up to filter and threshold, so adjust, threshold, and just alter it, just change it to, you know, because this is going to be, um, oops, on the wrong one. So there you go. Um, say that's what I wanted, right? Um, what I want to do now is just go in here, select that, and it's going to texture it. So there you go. Uh, and it will texture wherever that little plus sign is pointing. It's not going to texture outside of that. Um, it will kind of, you will see some of the edges coming, bleeding off a little bit. But it will, for the most part, just texture the immediate space that is next to it. So, um, Obviously, there's faster ways of doing this, but again, I don't particularly care. I do this because it's relaxing and I'm okay with, you know, not working smarter in this aspect because I do that all day at work. Anyway, um, so you can kind of see like some spots where it kind of goes a little sideways. Um, you know, it doesn't do exactly what, you know, all of it and you can go through and fix that up. Um, again, there's an easier way of doing that. But what I'm going to do now is just going to convert it and do a transparency layer with it. That's going to finish flooding. Uh, it has to finish the steps that you've actually sent into memory. And then you can go ahead and attach it to the file down below. Um, so, yeah. We... Okay, anyway. So doing that... Um, there you go, so it's textured now, right? Um, and you can play around with this too. Now, this is, you can see here where it's kind of textured here. It's, you know, it kind of looks washed out in the other spots that were white. Um, and in that case, uh, I feel like that's what I ended up doing in this case. Let me see. Yeah. 
you invert it and it's just going to texture the uh, and that's the the transparency mask that you invert uh, and that's just going to texture the spots that you wanted to texture um, again you can just play around with it and get that to work um, as for me I, I mean I'm not really all that interested in doing that sort of thing right now because again I'm just working on the actual art um, a lot of these height maps that people do are imported uh, they're grayscale maps uh, that they you can get it from Google Pro which they're not the best quality um, but there's other tools that you can use to get them um, and that's great uh, but if you hand draw things you are limited by your ability to a use the tool and b it's kind of a time constraint like for myself um, I don't have a lot of time to do this so I did a lot of shortcuts um, I cheated a lot so I you know I, I did black and white then I I just kind of added some uh, gradients um, and then I imported it into another program added more terrain then I brought it back and then I textured it and that seemed to work out all right because like these gray spots ended up being actual valleys and because it's a gradient map um, it it goes into the next gradients really well so it'll go from a shade to a tent really well um, and cleanly um, so if I was to import this it would actually look like stone well to you know the degree anyway um, so yeah that's pretty much it I'm I'm going to do an actual uh, video on start to finish something simple but that's the basic run